You're a runner, and welcome to FN Tahiti. I hope you're all doing well. Apologies if I sound a little bit odd. I'm a little bit ill, uh, but you know, still powering through with Football Manager. That is the cure all. Uh, in this episode, we're going to play two league matches. So one against the uh, Spearheads, and then we'll come back for one against Bora Bora. Then we'll have a bit of a break, and then we'll come back in the next episode for Taha and Tetaroa. See how we're doing in the league. Um, a few international bits and pieces have happened. So I'll go back to schedule actually. So I think so. the last episode that you'll have seen was against Moria, where we won 2 1. We beat two Motis, uh, Island Exiles, and Mutiny Trophy. It's 2 0, so we're top of the group quite comfortably there. Lost against Menu Society quite barely, uh, to be honest. And then we've got our next two matches. We also had an international match. Um, we beat the uh, Democratic Republic of Congo 3-0 in a friendly. Now, admittedly, it is just friendly, but they've got real players. Look at this. A lot of them actually based in uh, the DR of Congo. Um, we could not see much about them, but some of them look pretty decent. And then there's, look, they're playing in the uh, Liga. Uh, Wigan, who I have no idea where they are. So they must still be in the yeah, championship. Um, Hertha Huddersfield, my hometown. Look, he's good. Um, Torino. Oh, so basically, some real players. Only oh, beat them three now. Uh, Borin, Roger, and Bovale scoring. We rotated a lot of them um, players in actually. So your assistant manager for international matches. If you've not done international management in football manager, I don't blame you because it's frankly a little bit of a slog. It has none of the detail that the rest of the game's got. It is. I was going to say it's barely functional, that's really mean. It works. Um, I can do this conference. Um, it works, but it's not got the character, the flavour that the rest of the um, game actually has. So because of that, because I, I just kind of wanted to see um, what some of the fringe players would do, I, I did what the assistant manager recommended. So the assistant manager said, here's your recommended... Uh, Squad of 22-23. So I rotated it in. <coughs> Brought a few uh, younger players in, some fringe ones, given their caps as well. I don't think they're going to leave us for France or anything, but i got to cap them anyway. I didn't record it because I thought, you know, it's just a friendly. I thought we were going to get absolutely destroyed. Um, so, you know, I was, I was all right with not showing that. It turns out it was an absolute blind of a match, 3-0. That's kind of promising for the World Cup itself. So we'll bear that in mind. Just remember, we are going to the World Cup. We are going to have to beat some real teams. Um, the DR of Congo are above us in the ranking significantly. We've got the spearheads now. Let's ignore all that. I quite like the spearheads kit. I need to revamp the badge. I think it's not as striking as some of the other badges, but we'll, we'll get on to that. I am obviously going to try and redo all the kits and give them some 3D kits for the um, FM20 release. Just a note here, you might notice that seven points have been deducted from AI Island because they're in administration, so now they're on two points. They're almost certainly going down, um, and they're in a bit of financial distress. So that's changed the bottom of the table a little bit. So they would have been clear, they would have been 12th easily if it hadn't been for that. In terms of where we are, there's still a bit of a gap, isn't there? There's six points between us and second. We need to make sure we're not dropping any points now got to get through this uh, with a relatively un not just unbeaten record we need a winning record we need to make sure there are no doubts and I believe Manuel on the bench go with this Bernard's had a good couple of games I think. well the last game wasn't but he's been performing quite well they've gone for the 4-5-1 I don't really recognise any of the players. I do feel bad for them because they are one of the Marquesan sides. They would be good if they stay up. It really would be. Like their floodlights. Which sounds like a really weird thing to say, but it's a stadium with a little bit of character. Yeah, it'd be good if they stay up, but I don't think they've got it in them. Spearling. I think for FM20. Uh, when I do the TT game, I'm obviously not going to be the humpbacks. I've already been the humpbacks. 
That was fun. I'll have to start with a different team. I'm also not going to start with the wings because I've already been the wings now. So the next FM20 will be me taking on a different team. Um, I also won't take on AS Chance because they can't get into the O League as it stands. But everyone else is pretty much fair game. Um, I won't take up a Tetaroa because that's the team my brother used to play as when we were doing our network saves. And I think Tetaroa is scum. There, said it. Scum. Um, if you ever want to see any videos of the actual island of Tetaroa, uh, there's a BBC documentary about like, fantastic hotels and things like that, and it's got the Marlon Brando Hotel or Resort. So there's um, a documentary about that resort, and it looks amazing. But obviously their football team is scum, not that they have a real one. They're knocking around all right. Pretty low chance match so far. Oh, good long ball, collides away. Oh, so close. Smacked it so hard it's bounced and spun back out into play. Come on, let's get this goal. We can't lose to them. We can't drop points to them either. Second from bottom. Oh. Renard's going to go long. Big to Kalai. Come on, second chance. Oh, there we go, third. Third chance, finally gets it in. First one straight at the keeper, second one sneaks past him. Essentially a long ball to an extent. Oh, yes. That one probably doesn't count as a long ball in the match engine. There we are, we're off the mark. Janin scored for Moria, he was player of the month last month. In a while since any of our players have been player of the month. Or Renard, almost. Clyde just wasn't quite where he needed to be. Get that back in. Oh, Jean Baptiste. Oh, speculative, but he went in. It didn't even look like he had any power on that with the way he swung his foot. A little bit out of nowhere. Lazy looking shot. Which, you know, it was. Bit of lick on there actually. Let's still trying. I think they've got a goal in them. Dodge, sir. Pricks in the future there. Just before half time as well. Good to last out without that. Nice little move, back and forwards, and then off to the wing. Yep, keep it up. Renard's going to come off for Wallace. Wallace? Manuel. Wallace is going to play a nice striker. I see you're in. Ooh, almost. We didn't really deal with that. Overlay scored for the Huyen Islanders. Waring scored as well. Just keeping an eye on my uh, teaching players. I'm excited for the World Cup. On Spearling, try it again. One more. Jump up. Oh, yeah. He bounced off him. Pretty sure that's a really top end. He looked like he ran into the back of him. Who's taking this? You bet. Well, he did it. Looked like he wasn't going to, but he did it. Let's go the season. So he is the 35 year old experienced winger we've brought on as kind of backup for Frey. He's also doubling up as our director of football. Um, he's not a very good director of football, but because I don't really use a director of football to do anything, he didn't need to be. Um, just had a good personality. Not you know, two birds, one contract. Interesting balls going there. I just thought it was easier to that bit filled, keep the players happy, making sure we filled all the kind of staff positions we needed to. It was cheaper to have one person on a slightly higher wage than two people on a normal wage. On ball by Jean Baptiste, collides through. 
should have cut it across. Greedy. Bubble three. I start thinking about another sub. I say every time, but the flags, you can't see it now that we've got this overlay, but the custom graphics that FM itself creates based on the attributes you put in the game are fantastic. So I've not created these. I put them in the game and then the graphical representations being altered to fit them in. Run curve for spealing. And twig for oh no, apparently I put twig on in net. No, don't do that. Morpia uh, Tekara Terra's match uh, Tekara Terra's match looks good. I jump up Tease, back to Lamb. Hubert. Ooh. Two goals. Right place. Calmly done. This is good. It's getting a bit of momentum going. I see the spearhead's flag there. It's about time to blow the whistle on this one. Be good, because I'm about to sneeze, I think. Stand still a six point gap. Long ball. Yeah, we got it. This is it. We've won it. A bad result for the spearheads, but not unexpected. I think it's one of those matches where I probably expected goals were quite high because the positions we were getting in were good. We didn't have many shots on goal compared to some matches, but they were good. All going badly for me. Uh, right, I'll be back in a second with the next match. Okay, so we're back for the Bora Bora match. Um, in the the matches played the day before, the Humpbacks played Moria. Humpbacks did us a favour and beat them. 2-0, uh, I think it was. So that puts us in a slightly better position. If we win this match, there'll only be three points ahead of us, which is a gap we can kind of start working on. Um, but we will have to see. I don't want to make too many changes, but I'm going to bring Paul Manuel on for Renard. Because... Uh, on average, Manuel wins more points per game for us than um, Renard does. But otherwise, I'm going to keep this pretty much the same. Ah, uh, the old sand pitch. Time is running out on the sand pitch. Big shake of the hands. Oh, high five. That was a high five. I like how informal my manager has become. All this shaking hands nonsense. Next match will be a fist bump. More for it. Forward, Manuel. Oh, there's almost three attempts there. He should have probably just passed that to Kalai. You know what? Never mind. Bora Bora are just above us in the table, so this is quite an important match. Anyway, so form wise, we're roughly equivalent. Spearling, get it in. Almost. Yeah, form wise, we're almost equivalent. Points wise, we basically are. Oh, Vigler. Cross the face of goal. Really need something out of this one. We need Huahin. Chance and Moria, and as well as Bora Bora, to be dropping points. Not quite. Let's try back in. And twig as a replacement for Lamb. Oh, that is terrible. Held on for it too long. We should have gone long. There we go. Bond's got it. Back we go. Bigler, go long. 
and Twen stuff. Kalai's there. That was an interesting highlight, back and forth. I have to admit, as much as I'm looking forward to FM20, and this is despite the fact that all the features they're announcing aren't really features, they're just improvements. I am still really enjoying this, this save. I really just wish we could, I could plug this save into FM20 with all the changes and just carry on. But obviously that can't work. I'm not saying that should happen. I guess it would be amazing if all the kind of time that's gone into this could just carry on into the, the next one. But we'll just start afresh. It's fine. Some of the features look really good to me. Um, a lot of them, a lot of the kind of Twitter poll ones that Miles has been doing. Um, by the time this comes out, the beta might be out, who knows. But a lot of them aren't massive changes. I don't think they deserve to be called features. You know, changing some of the interface is not a feature. That's an improvement. That's fine. It's an improvement. Own it. Um, and all of the improvements look like they'll be good. And they'll all look like they'll improve somebody's game somewhere. Some of them might not necessarily improve yours or mine. Like Portuguese B teams, for example. If I'm not playing in Portugal, it's not going to be an issue. But the fact that there's all these changes going in, that's all, they're all good positive changes. They're just not huge changes. And again, I'm fine with that. I just don't like it being sold as a, a feature when it's not. But I am looking forward to things like the player pathway. And I am looking forward to things like the development hub. They'll be really useful, I think. Um, you just add a little bit of extra, extra dimension to the game. Really need another goal here. Yes, chance of winning. It's not what we wanted. Chance winning that puts us behind them as well. Although, chance don't count, do they, for the um, early qualification? So it would go to who was in third place if chance were in second. Humpbacks already feel a little bit like they're out of um, reach. Bring on Frey for Hubert. Um, Thomas for Twigs, he's not very really sharp. Like that for the moment. You know, they're 11 points ahead. Seems like quite a huge gap with just over half the season gone. They've not lost yet in the league. Played 14, won 12, drawn 2. Plus. Too close, really. Come on, just hold on. Almost. Keep hold of it. We don't need another shot. We just need them not to have anything. There we go. Take your time. Well, I don't have any time wasting on. I don't believe in it. Looks like he's time wasting anyway. Well done, Thomas. What was that? Just pass. Keep on. Idiot. There we go. Another win. So that's six points from this episode. Let's have a look and see what that does to the table. We're fifth. We have three points behind Moria, six behind Chance. It's just Moria that we need to kind of beat into third place if Chance stays second. I just noticed on my calendar that the World Cup draw is going to be made. Um, I'm going to come back for that. Just give me a second. I'll be back for the uh, draw itself because it's not really enough to do a... Is it enough to do a separate video? It's not really, is it? It's just a draw. All right, we'll come back for that in a second. Okay, we're back. It's the draw. Draw for the World Cup is made today. Tea Society has been placed in the third pot for the draw. So I want to point out this. I think this is the first time I've been to the World Cup in about three, four versions of Football Manager. Partly because I've either stayed away from 
World Cups so from international management or when I've done it, it's always been in between. So it's been either Europe or um, the Olympics or something like that. So it's, for me, this is a big deal. Uh, we're in the third pot, which makes it sound like you know, maybe we're not in the fourth. We're not bottom. But actually, I think each group only has three teams in. So this is the the crap pot. Is he just drawing everything? Hmm. Where's the... It's not an automatic draw if there's only one group left. There's three, three teams left to go in there. If we do the automatic draw now... Oh, Honduras, is it going to be Spain or Australia? Oh, it's going to be Australia. Spain, maybe? oh, there we go. That is not very dramatic. Not very dramatic at all. But maybe I just double clicked by accident or something like they drew everything but that one group. I don't understand. Um, if you've ever had that happen during a World Cup, comment, let me know. So we've got a ridiculous amount of groups from groups A to group P. This is frankly a ridiculous format for the World Cup. Um, but you know, that's what it is. Group A, it's um, being hosted by Spain. So you've got Spain, Honduras, Australia. And we've got Colombia, Norway, and Tunisia. So I'm reckoning Spain top, Colombia top. Brazil around Ukraine. I reckon Brazil top. I, I don't know how I feel about this. We could get points. We beat Democratic uh, Republic of Congo, who are in the World Cup, and they are, what are they, 45th. We've got Nigeria, who are 11th. Okay, that's better. That's much better. Um, and Denmark, who are 38th. Okay, we could get points off Denmark, maybe. Maybe not, but, you know, they're not... After that result against uh, DR of Congo, they're not untouchable. Uh, Argentina, Japan and Russia, that's a really interesting group. I think I want to be quite tight. Uh, DR Congo, Mexico, Portugal. I expected Mexico, Portugal to top that. Ecuador, Ghana, Italy. It's got to be Italy, hasn't it? Uh, El Salvador, Romania, Senegal. That's an interesting one. Maybe Romania or Senegal for that one. South Korea, US or Wales. I reckon Wales. We've got that group. Chile, France, and Mali is going to be France. Paraguay, Switzerland, Uzbekistan. Maybe Switzerland. Uh, Costa Rica, Holland, Iraq is going to be Holland. They're the holders. Uh, Germany, Haiti, and Uruguay got to be Germany. England, Jamaica, Morocco. Oh, I reckon Morocco, a solid win for that one. Uh, but if not, then probably England. Uh, Belgium, Saudi Arabia, South Africa. Belgium, China, Croatia, Egypt. That one might be a bit tight as well. So there we go. We know that we've got Denmark and Nigeria. Start preparing for that in the World Cup. It makes it a little bit more real now. Even if the draw was a complete anticlimax and just revealed everything all in one go. Um, yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you in the next episode.